Yeah. Good evening. Uh, my name is Abraham Sweha. I'm a neurosurgeon, and we are transmitting live from uh, Amman, from the Farah Medical Campus uh, here in Jordan. Uh, this backdrop slide is uh, for me to say something that all the presidents of the World Federation of the Neurosurgical Societies they visited Jordan. We are on the map of neurosurgery worldwide. Uh, just to mention a few, uh, Jack. Uh, Jack Brucci and uh, Professor Sammy, the Blows, Peter Black, and others. Um, the topic for tonight is uh, germinoma with bilateral uh, location, bifocal. So we're talking about germ cell tumors, which arise from the embryonal rests of germinal cells. These are the totipotent cells uh, from which we are produced. So germ cell tumors. We may talk about seminoma from the testes, or this germinoma in the ovaries, or uh, germ cell in the retroperitoneum, intestinum, and also intracranial germ cells. So intracranial germ cells in general, they affect pediatric young adult group. They are rare. They are one to three percent of all pediatric brain tumors. And the Western series is less than the Asian series. So Asian series is more. The intracranial germ cells are either true germinomas or non-germinomas. The commonest is germinomas, two-thirds, one-third in non-germinom. These are potentially malignant, these are malignant. So we speak to get rid of the non-germinomas. These include the yolk sac tumor, or the old name, the endodermal sinus tumors, embryonal carcinoma, choriocarcinoma, teratoma with its types, mature and mature and malignant, and the mixed germ cell types. Examples of these non-germinoma germ cell tumor, yolk sac tumor, embryonal carcinoma, choriocarcinoma, Teratoma, with three times which we mentioned, the mature, immature, and the malignant transformation. The mixed germ cells. And recently they added this new type of final analytic type of pathology that was described in this paper. Let's concentrate on pure germinoma because our case is a pure germinoma. Germinomas, as I said, they are 3% of all pediatric brain tumors. The peak is 10 to 12 years. But look that 90% of cases are below the age of 20. So it's mainly pediatric young adults. Germinomas are associated with syndromes. Clean filter, which as you know is when a male has two or three X chromosomes. So he's a male but with feminine characters, with nobody hairs, with small testicles, etc. And they are liable to get germinomas or Nunan syndrome, which is just the same in affecting the growth and affecting so many organs development like heart defects and etc. and Down syndrome. So germinomas locations, the commonest is in pineal, followed by the supracellular, and it could be in both, bifocal, in the pineal and supracellular. So the commonest is pineal. And you may get it in other locations, which we don't think of, like third ventricle, lateral ventricle, fourth ventricle, basal ganglia, thalamus, and spinal cord. Let's go through them. Pineal germinoma. Germinoma in the pineal. This is the common style. Um, we don't know the reason, but they are common in males, the pineal ones. While well, the supracellular are common in females. Supracellular, common in the females affecting the stoke, the hypothalamus, like you can see here. And this is a word of warning. Any pediatric patient with DI, he must have a MRI. Don't say that this is usual for a patient, young patient to drink uh, lots of water and pass lots of urine. Must have a MRI. <laughs> This paper is from China, 2010, the intracranial germinoma. This is supracellular germinoma. 
I have a similar case like this, which turned out to be immature teratoma in Bahraini girl. So you can have double lesions in the supracellular, in the pineal, and this is very much pathognomonic of germinoids. So tumor developing in two sites. It is not actually spread upon tumor, developing in two sites. Different names for these double lesions, simultaneous tumors, synchronous tumors, sequential tumors, double tumors, multifocal or bifocal. No, not necessarily. This paper about the supracellular pioneer from Argentina, they conclude that it does not indicate dissemination. There are two focal tumors. So you can also get it in the basal ganglion, unilateral or bilateral. And who would of us, one of us, think of a basal tumor like as a germinoma? So unilateral or bilateral in the basal ganglion, which is not a common site for tumors. These are basal ganglia germinomas. Sometimes they are big tumors, sometimes they are subtle tumors sometimes with calcification. These are basal ganglia uh, germinoma. The typical presentation for a basal ganglia, especially in a child, poor schooling. This is the commonest presentation. Cognitive disturbances, personality changes, dystonia is very common because you are hitting the basal ganglia. And of course, in the is because of the close proximity to the internal capsule. So basal ganglion germinoma, this paper in, from USA 1999, you can see that it just increase or hemiatrophy of that area and then developing into a tumor. Findings in germ cell tumor arising from basal ganglion. Again, you just find a little change that you have to be aware of. Don't dismiss it as trauma or trauma because this will develop into a large tumor. This paper from Canada, from Toronto, Sick Children Hospital. Again, basal germinomas. You can see the changes here and there. Look at this very subtle change here. Or very big change like this here. Again, basal ganglia can occur in adults. They are common in children, but they can occur in adults like this. Different types of basal ganglia germinoma. This paper from Japan, 2004, again, subtle changes. And they are always associated with atrophy in that side, and of course, corresponding chemiparesis. <coughs> so you have to look for early imaging findings in these tumors. <coughs> this is the earliest you can see. You can see that there is atrophy and the basal ganglia there, and this would develop into a tumor if you are not careful. Same here and in here. Germinoma basal ganglia from Seoul, South Korea, 2010. This is the progression of this early change into this, into this. How long? In a one year time. Yep. They are potentially malignant, yes. Yes, one year. And uh, this is the PET scan to show you the uptake. This is very helpful to look at if you are in doubt. They can be in the lateral ventricle, as I said. You may easily miss this as choroid plexus tumor, while it is a germinoma. That's why we keep hammering the idea of differential diagnosis. You just cannot think of one or two pathologies and just walk. You have to think much deeper than this. They can occur in the medulla oblongata, inside the medulla. This paper from USA, from Boston. Uh, again, fourth ventricular tumor within the fourth ventricle. This is histological proven from Japan. Again, the value of PET scan in these tumors, you can see the uptake. We are not using PET scan a lot. We should. We should use tractography, we should use Spectroscopy and so on. And, yeah, sure. We have it, but we don't use it. It can affect the cerebellum itself. Cerebellar germinal, this paper, 2016, 
recent papers. <coughs> can affect the spinal cord, intrinsic, intramedullary spinal cord tumors from the radiology journal from Japan. And here is the word of warning about these uh, markers. In germinoma, the AFP alpha fetoprotein and the beta human coronary gonadotrophins are negative. So if you have a double lesion, in the, in the pineal and in the subrassinal cell, and you have AFB negative and BHD, this is most likely germinal. While in the others, in the non germinoma, they are usually positive. Okay? So, this is a very important uh, marker. Are there staging of germinomas? Yes. Starting with zero, when you have just a tumor with no metastasis. Or one, if you have just positive cytology in the CSF. M2, if you have intracranial metastasis. And M3, if you have spinal metastasis. So if you have a case of germinoma, please do total spinal MRI. So that you would know whether there is metastasis or not. So that you can stage your tumor properly. Can they metastasize? Yes, look at this. Metastasis inside the cranium or to the spine. What is the treatment of these germinomas? Controversial, but basically main landmarks. Surgery, in, in germinoma, you may not do surgery if you are sure. But in, in the others, you have to do surgery to debulk the tumor as much as you can. Chemotherapy is there, radiation is there. This is a very important paper, it says, is histological verification crucial for therapy? This is from Holland, Netherlands, 2007. So if you have a supracellular and pineal location like this, with normal alpha fetoprotein, normal PHCG, the only possible diagnosis is germinoma, and you can start with low dose medication. Without it. Without it. <coughs> what is the current management? <coughs> they usually come with, with hydrocephalus. And what is the Arab disease and the the underdeveloped country's shot. disease is shot. Yeah. This is crime against humanity, and I will not stop uh, fighting against it. But we teach residents to do shunts unnecessarily. So the resident would come with reputation of doing shunts and division of shunts. The best shunt is no shunt. It is universal everywhere in the world, except in the Arab countries and in the underdeveloped world. You can't just leave this tumor and put a shunt. You just can't. This is a crime. Or this tumor and put a shunt. But this is everyday practice in Jordan. So what about radio and chemotherapy? Germinomas are responsive for both, more for radio <coughs> more than chemo. So radiotherapy, they are radiosensitive. Look at this. Five year relapse free, 90 to 99 percent. Five year overall survival is 85 percent. So it's very good. Let's see this. This is chemotherapy prior to reduce dose. What about giving chemotherapy and then give low dose of radiation? They have tried it in USA and they say it's useful. This is the one case, double legion. And this is six months after radiotherapy alone, without surgery, without mercy. Another case, nine months after radiotherapy alone, without mercy. Well, As I said, because it is double and because AFB and beta HCG are not, uh, free. So you can't be sure that this is 100% a germinal. And you hit them both at the same time? Yes, one yes, you hit them both at the same time. We will, we will come to it. Nine months after radiotherapy alone. These are papers, not mine. This germinoma radiation only from the German cooperative study, 83 to 93. Just radiation only. Cranial spinal radiation, 36 grays. Local boost of radiation, 50 grays. They used it in 60 patients and reported 94 overall survival. Five years? Yes, five years, of course. 
However, this is the warning, radiation only requires higher doses and larger fields with high risk of long-term sequel, especially in a child. So everything has something to weigh. This is another paper, 2005 from Canada, from Toronto, limited field radiation for bifocal germinoma. And this is the paper also from uh, Taiwan. Uh, germinoma, can we lower radiation dose without chemotherapy? And they said, yes, if the gestatic base, so long that high doses of radiation cause damage, you have low dose, you have 30 grays. There's something called extended focal radiotherapy. And this is your answer, Mahmoud Khatib. This is radiation to the ventricular system. This is called extended focal, different from craniospinal. Again, this is from Taiwan, paper from Taiwan, uh, published in the Charles Nervous System, 2008, about seven patients. They just give them focal, including ventricular system. What about chemotherapy? And it's just good timing, I know. Chemotherapy for germinoma, it's less response than radiotherapy. Radiotherapy for germinoma is a better response. Again here, two years overall survival is 84%, so it's not bad. Germinoma, chemotherapy only. First international cooperative study, chemotherapy without radiation by the use of uh, carboplatin, etoposide, and leomycin. Published 96, 45 patients, one third, they were free of relapse. So people are trying radiation alone, chemotherapy alone, but at the end of the day, the multimodality is the best. This is a paper about chemotherapy only. This is the second international cooperative study, published 2004, use of cisplatin and cyclophosphamide, five-year survival, 75%, which is good. Again, they admit that chemotherapy alone is less effective than radiotherapy. So, multimodality is the best treatment. French study, experience of French society in 1997, and the Japanese study, 2004, they use chemo and radiotherapy. So combined chemo and radiotherapy, the Japanese experience, 2001, using the cisplatin and radiotherapy, 24 rays, low dose. So the aim is they use chemotherapy and this would allow them to give low dose of radiation. As you know, we are treating children here. Uh, again, induction chemotherapy followed by low dose radiotherapy. So many papers, now it is well established. You give chemotherapy, you give low dose radiotherapy. This is the best combination. From Japan, Jamal Clinical Oncology using these drugs and small dose of radiation. Uh, this is again, Germinoma Optimal Treatment Strategy uh, from Japan, Journal of Neur uh, Neurosurgery Pediatric, Chemotherapy followed by Low Dose Radiotherapy. <coughs> chemotherapy prior to radiation from USC 2010. And this is a very interesting paper by Moray from Cambridge, 2013, the third international CNS germ cell tumor symposium. They ask the delegates to say what is their treatment, and they say they should receive radiotherapy for the ventricles, for the craniospinal, and chemotherapy to reduce dose of radiation. So, period. Chemo, then followed by radio. So, germinomas are curable in most of the cases. The over-recurrences may be observed many years. So, again, the motto here is don't treat the patient and let him go. You have to follow him very, very close, even if it is a germinoma. So let's look at these recurrent ones. They recur. Look at this. This is the radiation field taking the whole ventricle. The recurrence occurred outside it. So this is something to remember. Again, here, it's outside it. The radiation was given for the ventricular system. The recurrence was outside the field. Like here, it's outside the field. Many years after finishing. So they can metastasize. <coughs> Yes, potentially malignant, and here they are just designed to the external ear. Can they transform into pure malignant? Yes, they can. Germinoma, 
transforming to malignant in 2010 from USA, again from Massachusetts, Boston. You can see the recurrence. So we have given you an idea about germinomas in general and the germ cell tumor in general, germinoma in particular, because our case is a germinoma and we'll discuss this clinical, radiological, operative pathological correlation. I've sent you this uh, uh, to advertise about this lecture. This is the pictures before, and this is after. This is the histopathology. This is just a brief introduction. Our patient for tonight is a 16-year-old patient from Iraq, and this goes back to 2013. Very interesting story and very sad. When she became 10 years old, her family started to know that she is not growing like her peers. She has short stature, no breast development, and no pubic or axillary hair, but she wasn't treated until eight months before admission, when she was 16. So you lose. I mean, the chronologist and the crowd can tell us. You cannot treat the dwarfism after this, when the, when the physis are closed, which is usually at the age of 10 to 12. So she had a growth retardation due to growth hormone deficiency, which did not happen as a form of a treatment unless she became 16 years of age. That shows you how backward we are in medicine and the Arab world. We have to stop bragging about our progress. We should be dealing with our mishappenings. What age is Queen at eight years old? They don't examine them to start with an Iraqi girl. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I, mean, I mean, ask also any pediatric you know, uh, endocrinologist here, they can tell you horrible stories. So, hey, Marwan is asking me, do we screen these? Yes. The screen is the, the growth chart. Yeah, they want to see exactly. The chart. So, don't you usually take action? <laughs> they don't examine. You have to examine. They start examining patients, they just do x rays, and that's it. I mean, what can you do in a clinic seeing 200 patients within three hours? If you just want to say hello, hello, no, hello, you're not It's an attitude. It is an also an attitude, yes. So, recently, and that's what brought her, she started complaining of headache. And the word, very severe 15 days prior to admission. Very severe. Frequent vomiting. Polyuria, polydipsy, drinking three liters a day and two liters at night, five liters. I remember one girl like this who came with craniofer in German. She went to the endocrinologist and they said, he told the, fam the family, it's good, your child is drinking. <laughs> so she had there, because of the headache and the vomiting and everything, she had this CT scan. What did they want to do? Sure. Somehow they just managed to escape and they came our way. So examining her, she is maldeveloped secondary sexual features for a 16 year old. She was cachectin campaign. Last comb scale was 14 over 15. <coughs> Clinical nerves intact. She had papilledema. She had some motor weakness. And basically, her CBC, bleeding time, kidney functions, liver functions were okay. However, in the pituitary function test, you can see LH is low, FSH is low, prolactin is okay, P testosterone is low, free T4 is low, and cortisol is normal. The protein was high. Yes. And this is her urine analysis. <coughs> so we. Uh, we did see to the endocrinologist at that time, uh, Dr. Nadal Al-Khatib, I asked him to come here now. Yeah. Al-Khatib is the endocrinologist who's seen her. And what did he have to say? Patient has long history of anorexia, which she looks pale, semi-conscious, no secondary sexual characteristics, hypogonadic hypogonadism, generalized bone tenderness suggestive of osteomalacia, history of polyuria polydipsia, Thyroid function test is normal, the renal access is intact, patient reptiles showed hyponatremia, hypernatremia, confirms and diabetes and symptoms. Images, may I call upon Dr. Ahmed Atami to tell us about the images? The 
مساء الخير. This is uh, the uh, axial MRI T1 rated without contrast for this patient. You can see there is a huge mass region occupying almost all the right frontal uh, lobe with some signal void, which mostly due to calcification. The region extending downward to obstruct the foramen of Monroe, causing obstructive hydrocat at the level of uh, lateral ventricle. Next. Also, T1 weighted without contrast. You can see from down to up, this is the tumor extending upward, reaching the septum pellucidum also. Uh, post contrast, this is axial T1 weighted post contrast. You can see there is almost a uh, heterogeneous enhancement with signal void mostly due to calcification, the region extending into the foramen of Monroe obstructing. There is no evidence of extension into the brain parenchyme, but there is some <coughs> edema here is uh, due to uh, acute obstruction. Uh, T1 weighted also post contrast. You can see there is an uh, extension of the tumor into the right cabernet sinus. Uh, from down to up, this is the uh, scleral sinus. This is the tumor in the right frontal lobe. Tumor post contrast reaching the septum pellucidum with some cystic changes and calcification. T2 weighted. This is uh, showing the tumor. The tumor has multiple cystic changes inside. Large one extending downwards. This is the edema, transepidemic edema due to acute obstruction. T2 weighted from down to up, almost the same finding with the edema here. This is, I think, flare, flare sequence, uh, the tumor touching the septum pellucidum. Coronal view was contrast also. You can see the tumor is a huge one reaching the supracellar, and there is some uh, calcification here. Till now, the differential diagnosis, there are four differential diagnoses. The most important, huh? this, is an, this is another, I think this is another tumor extending from supracellar, uh, occupying the third ventricle, obliterating the optic chiasm recess and the, uh, <coughs> this is, I think, in uh, fasciculum recess. There is, this is the pituitary gland. There is no right signal within the posterior uh, hypo, uh, neuro epiphysis. Uh, sagittal view, different levels. You can see the tumor, cystic changes, and calcification. And this is the pituitary gland. Also, multiple level, and the sagittal view was contrast, also, the same findings. T2 weighted, uh, you can see the tumor, huge one, here, affecting the uh, stork and infundibium. And I think also there is no bright signal within the here, your deficits. Uh, angio, you can see the angio grossly normal, uh, vertebral, vertebral, basilar, internal carotid, middle carotid, middle several artery, anterior several artery. Uh, venogram, MRV, you can see this is the severe sagittal sinus, this is the stress sinus, vein of gallon, transverse, transverse, and this is the angio also. Grossly normal. So there's really not any kind of vascular involvement? No, from the uh, angio. Uh, last one. Uh, the differential diagnosis regarding the uh, lateral ventricle and the uh, frontal horn, there are three to four differential diagnoses. The main one is the central neurocytoma. Almost the same appearance, but the difference is the age is about 20 to 40. The second differential diagnosis is metastasis. The patient didn't have any history of uh, tumors. The third thing is subepidemic genesis astrocytoma, which is common in tuberous sclerosis. It's about 10 to 15%, but in normal population is then 0.5. The last one is subepidemoma. The subepidemoma, first of all, does not enhance as this region. Second, fourth ventricle more common. And the supracellular tumor, differential diagnosis, there are three. Craniopharyngioma, which is heavy calcification, the tumor does not have. The second one is 
No, no. Chiasmatic hypothalamic glioma. This is almost identical to this tumor. Uh, could be the biosystem astrocytoma, could be a biomyxoid type tumor. I think metastasis is the last one. Could you, could you also think regarding the final tumor of a binary tumor like final cytoma or final parenchymal tumor with a new differentiation? Wait. Regarding the final site, the final location. Sure, you should. Yes, you have to look. There's no tumor here. Yeah, so isn't it, isn't it among the differential radiology at least? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, one point I want to emphasize that the, the R3 tumor or four tumors can involve the pituitary, the supracellular, in addition to the binary body. One is germinoma, second is lymphoma, and third is metastasis, and rare is retinoblastoma. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> and just want to add that this arching of anterior cerebral denotes that there is hydrocephalus, and for the old neurosurgeons, they used, they did not have CT, MRI. They used to count on this phenomenon of high arching of anterior cerebral to know that there is hydrocephalus. So the differential diagnosis is varied, <coughs> and I'm putting my cases here. These are not cases from books, these are actual cases of mine, and the histology is very fine. This one is a pinocytic astrocytoma, astrocytoma grade 3, JBM glioma, central neurocytoma. This was a, a girl from Iraq. Subependymoma, which is different from ependymoma and different from tuberous sclerosis. I think we presented the Jordanian family under this roof with the three kids having this tuberous sclerosis. Cranopharyngioma can be totally, exclusively within the ventricular system. Peanut metastasis. So, which approach I would choose for this patient? Now, I know it is bifocal, but again, this is a huge tumor causing hydrocephalus, so I have to do something for it. Either you go transcalosal in the midline, or you go transcortical, because the tumor was mainly on the right side, so I opted to go transcortical. Some anatomy here. So you will not go interhemispheric through the corpus, you go through the ventricle itself, like this. This is where you go. Usually you choose either the sulcus between the severe and middle frontal gyrus or the middle frontal gyrus. So you go like this. And this is the so-called triangular flab, which I use. This is the coronal suture. So you have to be familiar with the anatomy of the ventricular system. How many of our neurosurgical residents are very, very, very few? because what he knows is just to put a shunt and do a disc or evacuate a subdural hematoma. So this is the relationship of the ventricular system with the thalamus, with the codate nucleus, with everything that you need to know. And I always ask in the exam, how far is the foramen of Monroe from the internal capsule? The answer is less than one millimeter. So this is the corpus callosum, this is lateral ventricle, this is foramen of Monroe. This probe is going through foramen of Monroe, so we have two foramenae of Monroe on each side. And Monroe is a man, not a woman. So this is the corpus callosum, this is the uh, internal cerebral vein. So you have to be careful. If you damage internal cerebral vein, if you damage the thalamus trade vein, patient either will have hemiplegia or die. So there's no joke here. This is coronal anatomy in the ventricle. You will go this way into the ventricular system. You have the caudate nucleus, you have the thalamus, caudate nucleus, basal ganglia, internal capsule. <coughs> and that's what I meant here. Internal capsule is less than a millimeter from foramen of Monroe. You have to imagine where is the head of the caudate of the nucleus and how it rotates around the thalamus. So this is the head of the caudate coming down codate around the thalamus. And this is when you open both ventricles, the right ventricle and the left ventricle, the septum, foramen of Monroe on the right, foramen of Monroe on the left, the thalamus triad vein, the septal vein, joining to form the internal cerebral vein. 
So the thalamus trade with the septum forming intensive cerebral vein. Damage this, it's the end of the patient. So this is the roof of the third ventricle with two cerebral veins. We got the consent to have the surgery. And as I said, it has to be detailed as such. The flimsy piece of paper that people count on the management and Dr. Mohammed can allude to this is no more acceptable. Kanun al Musal Tabi has been activated. If you don't write this, you'll go to jail easily. Stop just attending, say that uh, I agree to have the surgery and so on. The two words or two sentences you have to mention everything. Am I not right, Dr. Mohammed? Yes, cool. absolutely. So, as we were preparing, patient had a dramatic sudden deterioration in her level of consciousness with anisocoria, fixed dilated pupil, all of a sudden, within a matter of minutes. We were just, surgery? No, no. As, and we were preparing for surgery, doing investigations, blah, 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 and she just went off completely with fixed dilated pupil. What to do? Don't put a shunt. <laughs> Uh, because this is an excuse. Oh, it was late at night and the patient was going off, so we had to put a shunt. Ridiculous. You can put extended drain if you like. It is because you don't know how to do the surgery that you are doing the shunt. It's clear. One plus one equals two. It is for short-sighted surgeon, for a third-class mediocre surgeon who puts shunts with these cases. It's very easy. So we got the anesthesia, we, it was an emergency, so we were running like, like anything. So let's see the surgeon. And again here, some people may try to put uh, uh, external drain. Again, this is sometimes as dangerous as the shunt itself. Uh, you just go for the tumor, try to open the foramen of moral as much as you can. So this is the cortical incision on the right side, in the middle frontal gyrus, and going into the ventricle. And this is the tumor. So you go right into the ventricle. Right into the ventricle, right into the tumor. There is no ventricle, it's closed. There is no brain tissue in between? Uh, there is, but you choose where you go. So you start removing the tumor. And as you proceed, you will find the brain is getting laxer and laxer. So this is the tumor. And the white stuff is the ventricular lining. Very vascular tumor. So this is the septal vein. This is the thalamus rate vein. This is from the motor here. Still there is a tumor. So I'm relaxed. From the motor is open. And I just want to concentrate on the tumor. I'm putting it laterally to see the from the motor. I'm pushing it medially to see the relationship with the caudate nucleus. Again, a word of warning for residents. Caudate nucleus may look like a tumor. It's a granular and it has a color. You may miss it for a tumor. It's just the experience which makes you not damage it. Was it encapsulated? This was um, barely, barely encapsulated. <coughs> so you do the excision and the idea is not to take a biopsy. The idea is not just to open the front of the model, the idea is to take as much of the tumor as I can, 90%, 99%, 100%. The idea of biopsy and radiotherapy is criminal, to say the least. And it is a common day practice in the Arab world and developed countries. We have to fight this ignorance. We have to rise and say, this is wrong, stop it. So you can differentiate the deep tumor and the brain tissue. This is in the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. And here I'm completing the opening of the forum of Monroe. And you can see the CSF coming well. You can see that it is vascular. Here I'm officially opening and I have to keep an eye on the structures there, which is the fornix and the column of the fornix. You damage it and the patient will have complete loss of memory for recent events forever. 
here, taking the tumor out from the choroid plexus, and the lateral ventricle. So this is the choroid plexus, this is the steroid artery. So I'm happy I've taken much, much more than I thought I could, maybe 95, 98% of the tumor, and that in the ventricular system. And what do I do? I put a drain. Okay, I've opened for a more of it. Maybe it will there could be adhesions or blood clots. So I have to put something as a, as a precaution. So this is the extended drain which I'll keep it for a few days until I'm sure that there's no more hydrocephalus. Histology, Dr. Hassan. How long do you keep that external drain? A few days. Yes. This is a very interesting case. Uh, this is a germinoma as Dr. Ibrahim Spear alluded to. He uh, uh, did service by fluid where there was no evidence of tumor. So this is uh, still stage one. You can see this is a microscopic low power view. We can see very cellular tumor. This is what the germ cell tumor looks like. A lot of blood in the uh, area. <clears throat> uh, again, you can see how the cells, uh, they are dark blue nuclei uh, with the clear halo uh, of cytoplasm. Uh, and there are some uh, lymphocytes, I'll show you more. But this is typical of uh, germ cell tumors wherever you go whether in the brain, in the retroperitoneum area, or in the testis. And this is what it looks like. These are small lymphocytes. You can see them. And these are the tumor cells. There's a lot of lymphocytes here. And these are the tumor cells. And you can see they are usually large nucleus with the prominent nuclei and clear uh, cytoplasm. You can again see this is typical, a large a clear cytoplasm, a large nucleus with the prominent nuclei and in the and in the nest, and there is many lymphocytes. The lymphocytes usually sometimes give you a hint that this is a germ cell tumor. The other tumor that you can see lymphocytes in commonly is thymoma. So when you see something and you want to wonder if before the era of immunohistochemistry, this was a really a very good helpful hint that we are dealing with germinoma. You can see this is another higher power. You can see how the nucleus <coughs> large with clear cytoplasm, very vascular tumor, and uh, you can see many uh, lymphocytes in the background. Again, here you can see all of the same thing. I take a look out of pictures because these nice cases, rare, uh, you don't see them every day. Uh, again, you can see these are the tumor cells and these are like the lymphocytes in between the tumor cells. Again, here uh, you see mitosis in many times, and this is common in germ, in germ cell tumor cell mitosis. Again, you can see here other areas how the cell's cytoplasm is cleared. This is actually containing glycogen. I will show you by BS stain how it's positive by glycogen. This is BS stain, stains the glycogen. The uh, uh, red uh, stain is the one that indicates that the glycogen. You remember I told you this clear cytoplasm, actually the cytoplasm contains glycogen. That's why it's clear. And uh, this is one of the features of germ cell tumors. So this again, BS, and uh, you can stay st strongly positive. This give, when you see this in before the era of immuno, it gives you a strong hit with the hand, a strong hand with the uh, lymphocytes that this is germinoma. Uh, now with the immunohistochemistry, it's becoming very easy and more definitive. You are not allowed to almost to make diagnosis with the era of immuno. This is leukocyte common antigen. I want to show, to highlight how many lymphocytes you can see. Many lymphocytes, some, some of them they are probably, probably will not be evident if you don't, if you see them by H and E, but this is, makes them clear. This is, <clears throat> now we come to the immunohist chemistry. I will uh, elaborate more in the immunohist chemistry. Dr. Ibrahim has mentioned some, but now with germ cell tumors, uh, new markers are coming and more definitive markers are coming. This is called OCT34. Uh, and this is nuclear staining. And you can see mitosis here. This is a strongly positive nuclear staining. When you see this, this is very likely to be germ cell tumor. OCT34 stains uh, air tumors, germinomas and embryonal carcinomas. This is OCT3, OCT4, the same thing. 
This is the, the positive staining on the nucleus. You can see the clear cytoplasm. It's a nuclear staining, and when it is positive, it indicates a germ cell tumor. This is CD117. CD117, the same as CKIT, we call it. It was negative in this case, or it's, it's weakly positive in some cytoplasm, is cytoplasm staining. Uh, it has some probably clinical, and uh, uh, this is the CKIT cytoplasmic staining, and this is the CKIT cytoplasmic staining indicates that uh, this is also it's positive in uh, germ cell tumor, but it's positive in other things. It's, it's positive when there's thyroidase kinase enzyme uh, deficiency or, or uh, problem, and uh, we, we, we use it sometimes for a, a treatment, biological therapy. So it's not diagnostic of uh, germ cell tumor, this immuno, but it's helpful for confirming the diagnosis and for embryological therapy. This is a blab, or placental local, Luxate alkaline phosphatase, and you can see this cytoplasmic staining. I really like this stain. Uh, it's sometimes uh, strong. Now uh, people are becoming less and less interested with this stain because it stains other things like uh, epithelial tumors. But the same thing with other uh, immunohistochemistry markers. They stain sometimes other, but you have to take everything with the context. And when you see it with the context, I think it's a very good indication that this is, that this is a, a germ cell tumor. Actually, this is another case. I uh, had it recently. Uh, this case uh, was sent to me from Dr. Ala Adasi. I don't know, he's not here. Uh, this is what, uh, from 25 years old male, uh, has a brain tumor, uh, and he was called because they did pancytocurtin in one other lab, one famous lab. They did pancytocurtin, it was positive. He's 25 years old, and they called because of positive cytocurtin, that means that this to them, epithelial cells, and they called metastatic carcinoma. And they stopped at this point. They ignored the, the presence of lymphocytes, came to me as consultation. You can see so many lymphocytes there, and they are clear cells. If they looked really carefully in the histology, they won't miss this diagnosis. This is again the, the case. You can see how many lymphocytes. The, these are uh, the tumor cells. It was cytokeratin positive. Cytokeratin positive are usually present in non-germinomas like in embryonal carcinomas and alpha and yolk sac tumors. So you, ha you have really, when you have parasite curtain, you have to, to, see, to seek other uh, immune markers, as in this case I will show you. Uh, this case has other edges that are spindle cells, and this is tumor. This is part of the tumor, and this is uh, the tumor, and also forms uh, glandular-like elements. This is embryonal carcinoma. So this is non-germinoma, germ cell tumor, non-germinoma. And this is very important to look at the histology. So it's very important to look at your slides very well and to, to make everything with the context, not, not to jump into diagnosis because cytokeratin positive to call it carcinoma because it makes a whole lot of difference for this patient. You can see how these uh, tumor cells look from glands like, but you can see very interesting things. Problem you don't see but much. You can see globules in the cytoplasm. This is mitosis. You can see another globule in this cytoplasm. You can see another globule. When we see globules in the cytoplasm with the germ cell tumor, we suspect highly that this is yolk sac tumor because this is the secretion of yolk sac, the alpha feta protein. So what we did in this case, uh, this is Silafor. Silafor is the, one of the new uh, immune markers that is used for uh, germ cell tumors. It's positive in almost all germ cell tumors. It's black band germ cell tumor markers. Uh, it's positive, it's nuclear stem positivity. You can see it here. And you can see it also present in the spindle cells that we saw in this case. And it, now it's the preferred first line uh, uh, marker to call this a germ cell tumor. This is because sensitive and specific for germ cell tumors. This is a placenta localized cannabis physis in this tumor. You can see it's positive uh, cytoplasmic staining, membranous staining. And this is alpha feta protein I, that I mentioned to you, the globules. And these are the positivity. You can see them strongly positive. So this patient has a high alpha feta protein by immunostaining and by uh, serum. This is CD30. CD30 is not specific for germ cell tumors, but it is used uh, because it confirms the diagnosis and it's usually positive in non-germinomas. Uh, and this is very helpful. So, so really, this is OCT34, it was negative in this area. Uh, so I have the, the video, and it's, but I want to show you what really, what we have markers for germ cell tumors. Dr. Brahim mentioned some markers, but we really have extensive markers now because it, you have really to differentiate between uh, one tumor from other 
I think it's not present here. This is uh, embryonal carcinoma. Uh, this is germinoma, and this is embryonal carcinoma. This is yolk sac tumor and choriocarcinoma. You can see we ha I have in my lab all these markers that are in the red. Well, I use them when really I need to differentiate between different markers. Uh, you can see the salophore that I mentioned. It's positive in most of the tumors, not in teratoma. This is teratoma, not, will not be positive. Uh, OCT4 uh, positive usually in, uh, I use it for embryonal carcinoma and in germinoma. Uh, SOX2 is positive in germinoma and uh, uh, embryonal carcinoma. The blab uh, is positive mainly in uh, germinomas. And uh, the alpha theta protein is positive in yolk sac tumor, but we have an, another bitter stain for, alpha, for uh, yolk sac tumor now. It's, and it's available also, it's called clipcan 3 And it is very nice and very important staining. So you can see cytokeratin, you can see cytokeratin that they uh, depended on it in the last case. Uh, it's usually negative in germinoma, it's positive and strongly positive in other tumors. So if you really go, do, do cytokeratin, you, re, you really are going to go to do uh, mistakes uh, if you do it alone. Uh, I'll just show you this uh, video, this is uh, this is a patient that came to me uh, because of retroperitoneal tumor. I'll show you other areas of the germ cell tumor. You can see this is very big uh, retroperitoneal tumor displacing all the viscous. Uh, he is young, about in his 20s. And uh, I did for him uh, fine needle and two cuts, and uh, I did immune staining for him. And this was uh, a germ, a germ, germ cell tumor. Uh, was to show you other areas of the germ cell tumors. It's, it's, it's a short video. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I had a slide for these old markers, but I left this for you. Okay. So, so we finished say. 11 o'clock in the evening, 7 o'clock for the morning, she must have MRI. No patients on a ventilator to leave the theater because of the excuse. This is nonsense. This is medicine coming from Mars or other, other uh, planets. There's nothing as such in medicine. It's a creation of mediocre surgery to keep patients on ventilator because it was long surgery. It's utter nonsense. And you must have MRI the following morning, not a CT scan. The excuse is CT is better than MRI to show the blood. Utter nonsense. MRI is highly better than CT for the blood. So no excuse. MRI before surgery, MRI after. We want to know what have you done during the surgery, unless you want to hide something. So this is the immediate post-op. You can see where we went, tumor radically removed. I don't believe in biopsy at all. Marwan asked, do we attack both? I did not attack this, because once I confirm this is germinoma, there's no need to attack this. Just exactly. This is the rest of the pictures, because some of you may say that I have selected certain cuts. These are all the cuts, all the cuts, to show you exactly what have we have done. And this is the patient, the very following morning. She had her external drain still intact because I want to make sure that her hydrocephalus will resolve. All right, I opened one of the tomorrow, but you may have a clot, you may have adhesions, that may cause hydrocephalus. So this is the patient, no facial weakness, nothing, no weakness whatsoever. The drain is there, and this is for the nurses. Any nurses around? Uh, standard drain is different from any other drain. It is a killer if you don't know how to handle it. If you put it on the floor, patient will die instantly because all the CSF will come down, the brain will collapse and patient will die. We keep it at a certain distance, at a certain height. Either we open it uh, continuously and drain at a certain level or we open and close it accordingly. So, this is just CT to see the position of the external drain and that there is no hydrocephalus. This is the MRI again, showing you the radicality of excision. 
This is patient just before discharge. This is our discharge summary again, I keep alluding to because we are in, 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 in Farah Hospital, the only hospital who's doing this extensive discharge summary. And I'm happy to announce that our residents are very familiar with this. So they write excellent discharge summary nowadays. Everything is there. Every detail. And as I keep saying that discharge summary starts with admission. So recommendation that we need to give radiotherapy, although we did radical excision. So we refer for radiotherapy. Dr. Farah Nasser, can you come here? Dr. Samuel Khatib, Dr. Farah did radiotherapy. This patient treated in 1913 in July. He received to the tumor bed with safe margin. 45 degrees of radiation and 25 fractions. And uh, all the time she was, the patient was conscious, uh, well uh, oriented, and she did very well. And after that, we sent back to her doctor, and after that, we don't know what happened. I will show you. <laughs> so she had her radiotherapy, 50 degrees, 45 degrees of 25 fractions, no chemotherapy, just radiotherapy. And here she is, the same year, 2013, October 2013. We keep doing every three oh. months, sorry, every sorry. three months. Yeah, okay, okay, sir. Hello? May I ask a question? Why yes. did you only do radio since you were also reading earlier that the combination therapy would be more effective as a treatment? So, sure, because we have done radical excision, so one would be enough. Yeah, but you're dealing with another tumor as well. Yeah, it is exactly, because this is radio sensitive, very radio sensitive. Okay. Remember, okay. chemotherapy is less than radio. Yeah. So, this disappeared completely. There's nothing there with radiotherapy. No complications. October 2013, every three months. And then every six months, 2014. Her MRI, her photos. Uh, she disappeared into Iraq and came back 2016. Again, no trace of the tumor. She's doing well. 2017, February. Pictures. September 2017. Pictures. April 2018. Pictures. And just a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, she came by and she was a beautiful girl, doing very well. How much did she add in height? She did not. No, no, no because it was, it was nothing at all. No, nothing, not, a, not a one millimeter. Any, any idea about her school performance? Absolutely perfect. Performance. Absolutely yeah. perfect, yes. Sexual issues. Uh, started to develop some sexual. Uh, she started having a period, started and then come back. I will open the, the discussion just to finish with this. There is no tumor here. That's the latest MRI, latest MRI, and that's the girl. I think looking at her gives you the satisfaction of your life. You did not put a shunt. You did not make her life miserable with the shunt. You have done your job during surgery well. You have given her radiotherapy and followed her closely. That's the best you can achieve, and this is the satisfaction of a lifetime. Thank you very much. And with a smile. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, open, Dr. Dr. Rahimi. Thank you very much, Dr. Rahim. Thank you very much, Dr. Rahim, for this really nice and comprehensive history overview. I just have a few comments, if you allow me. Uh, first of all, I would like to comment that a German OMA, most, most of the cases, they do not secrete beta HCG. However, in 10 to 15 percent of cases, we can find beta SCG whether in the serum or in CSF. So this is the dilemma when we, okay. yes, when we have genome and positive uh, beta but SCG. But usually, we, usually it's a small increase, yes. not in the... Yes, the current recommendation is if it's more than 50 units per liter, we might consider re-biopsy for visible non genomic components. So some you know, people take it from 50 to 100. Yes, yes it's, it's contradiction, 50 to 100. 
And that's another element considering biopsy because sometimes we might biopsy the germinomatous component and not biopsy the non germinomatous component. So your comment is well taken that yeah. if you suspect that PTAC CG is high, it's better to go for biopsy. Yeah, especially sure. if more than 50. Yeah, uh, another thing I, I sh uh, I'd like also to share you in answering uh, uh, our colleagues' question why this patient did not receive chemo. Uh, because this patient, Dr. Nabil, treated her in 2013. Actually, uh, back then, most of physicians would treat with radiation alone. Now, three years, two or three years ago, the interim analysis of the current children's oncology group trial, the COVID trial, ACNS 1123, uh, they are, it's still recruiting patients. However, they did an interim analysis and they found superiority for combination of yeah, all sides. You mentioned that as well sure, in the sure. report. You mentioned that's yes. Yes. Now, this is study, the study is the exactly. 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 Is but for this patient, Dr. Nabil, I agree with him. He treated yeah, in 2013. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, this is an ongoing uh, study. Yeah, yeah, ongoing yeah. study. That's the reason I asked the question. Absolutely. You mentioned that. Yes, a, a, a very good question, absolutely. So they, uh, what they do is they get four cycles of cystitoposide for 12 weeks. Then we wait 30. We have to start radiation within 31 days. Uh, their standard is if the patient achieved complete remission radiologically to neoadjuvant chemo to give whole ventricular radiation, 18 degrees reduced dose. The, idea, the whole idea of giving chemo is to reduce the dose and volume of radiation to reduce the neurocognitive effects and the endocrine effects on the patient. Sure. We give 18 degrees, whole ventricular, then boost 12 degrees. The total will be 30 degrees. If this than CR, but the residual is this than 1.5 cm, we give higher dose, 24 degrees for the tubular, then boost to 36 degrees. Yeah. If the residual is, this is my question to you, if the residual is more than 1.5 centimeter, we might consider a second group surgery. Yeah. So here, in some cases, especially for non germinal matters, because it's this radiation sensitive and this chemo sensitive, the ropes and the surgery is even more important. Yeah. Um, a third point here is, yes, I totally agree with you, Dr. Sveh, that whole ventricular radiation is the way to go. However, in a case like this, I would also include the supracellular cistern and the prepontine cistern, all the way down to the foramen magnum, because whole ventricular radiation will not cover the, the, the contamination around the paracellular location. So this is just an important point for any trainees, anybody in radiation. Uh, so sometimes whole ventricular radiation alone is not okay. enough. We have to include the supracellular and the, uh, uh, the prepontine cistern, exactly. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to make a point tonight that I want to finish below one hour, and we did. Yes. Because I want to really finish in one hour. I people, you. Yeah, so we, we did well there. <laughs> Any questions? Any comments? Dr. Sure. Ahmed Jameed is a budding in your surgeon. Uh, budding, yeah, uh, budding. Uh, <laughs> is it possible? Yeah, I mean, the percent point one percent, and we found the other tumor, the other tumor. Yeah, I mean, why did you take the risk in not? I'm already there. Everything is open. At least I will see. I could not manage it. Good question. 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 After 31 days, within 31 days. Because as neurosurgeons, we can scan, we can healing, and we have a time period in now we can start the Once the screen is healed, after 30 days, you can give it. Back to your question. If you are sure, why should you take a biopsy? If you are in doubt, take a biopsy. But then I'll just take you through the biopsy. What are the drawbacks of a biopsy? In the best of hands, the Complications of biopsy is one to two percent. Infection, hemorrhage, and whatever. The most important ones are the positive, negative, and the negative positives. The amount of the specimen that you take and the metastasis that can occur across the thing. So you have to wait for it. But as you said, if you are in doubt, take a biopsy. Very good. Any questions? Please <coughs> I'm going to 
لتعليم الاطباء الجراحه العصبيه. So when we have these mistakes, why don't we have a committee or a high-level commission to do it? You would not believe what I'm going to say. People are forbidden from attending my lecture. Yes. If you go and attend my lecture, you will be sent to Tafile or to Karak as a punishment. <laughs> and I leave the rest of the question to Dr. Mu'min Habibi. <laughs> <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سؤال الاستاذ الدكتور كثير مهم لانه احنا انا حكيت هذا الكلام اول امبارح فبنحط شنط ونود احنا الان في معضله لانه بيست شنط از نو شنط وناس ثانيين بيست شنط از شنط فاحنا كخبراء في المحاكم وعضو في اللجنه العليا للمسؤوليه الفكريه بدنا كونسنسس راي مجموع جمهور الاطباء فاذا يعني انا متاكد وثقتي عاليه جدا جدا فيما يقول الدكتور ابراهيم لكن لما نروح المحاكم ونجيب كونسنسس راح نسمع اراء مختلفه كونفيوزن وزي ما حكى الدكتور ابراهيم في ناس فعلا في حرب الحضور على العلم حرب على العلم وبالتالي انا يعني شايف الموضوع مهم 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 وما بنقدرش نحله بالهيك باي فورس بقرار سلطه وهي لازم يشتغلوا ويقنعونا ليش هاي وليش هاي فانا يعني بعيد سؤالك لانه على ضوء هذا السؤال نستطيع نجاوب في المحاكم الان لما نطلب خبراء بيجينا الخبراء بيحكوا اراء مختلفه فالبيشنتس وود بي كونفيوز حتى المقيمين حتى المقيمين المقيمين اللي ما بيجي الدكتور ابراهيم كان بده حبس كل جراحي الاعصاب هي نحكي شغله عادي مش كل الاماكن اللي بالاردن يعني خلينا نحكي معظم الخدمه معظم الخدمه تقدم وين؟ بالجيش والصحه والاقل في مستشفيات القطاع الخاص الصح اللي بتعمل بس مش كل الاماكن عندها الفاسيلتي انها تعمل اللي انت بتعمل يعني يا حكيم مريضه عندها بوستير القصة المريض طبيب التخدير بالصحه بالراش يجي بالليل بقول لك خليها للصبح بوستير القصة يمرج بالراش يجي هلا انت بتوقع بدال لمها يعني هاي المريضه لو انا اللي بحضر محاضرات التلميذ يعني انا بعتبر لي الشرف بعتبر حالي تلميذ بس لو انه انا بالصحه او بالجيش اوكي ومش قادر اني اعمل راديكال سيرجري الترو في ذلك الوقت انا راح احط لها شنطه عشان ما تموت احط لها بلين او احط لها اي بي دي اتليست اذا ما لقيتش اي بي دي يا حكيم اذا ما لقيتش اي بي دي راح احط شنطه شيدنج تيوب وتش از ذات ان اني انا ما لقيتش شيدنج تيوب شو بدكم ونكس هاي الشباب 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 If you put external drain and choose one member of the team to Medina or to Jama who has experience, if you don't, then the Medina should be closed. frustrated. <laughs> الامور كيف بيجي واحد هون بعلمهم هيك واحد ثاني بعلمهم هيك كل واحد بيقتنع الظروف ما بتخدم بالضبط الظروف ما بتخدم وبالتالي هذا راح يخلي الموضوع الموضوع صعب الاقتراح تبع الدكتوره سبع العيش اقتراح رائع لكن هيها بدي كلمه What I'm saying is not me. Had al hakiyat is not Ibrahim's prophecy about this. This is the recommendation of the oncology committee of the World Federation. Yes, ala was. So whatever anybody says here. Yes. شو نقدر نطبق منه بالأردن؟ We have to. Sorry. شو نقدر نطبق منه؟ أنا بس يعني أنا هاي اللي ما تبع عقد وزاد صحة والدكتور زي كا. Okay. وقبل ما نفوت على المحاضرة لسه بسأله بقول له ليش تركت الكرة؟ انت بالكرك، ليش تركت الكرك؟ 
قال يعني ببساطة عشان يوم ما يجيني مريض عنده كرونيك صب بيورال شو بدي أفتح راسه الحجر يعني أنت مخيل معي لوين المأساة the uh, Western countries or the Eastern countries, whereby we have, uh, like in Egypt, not a problem, guidelines. Guidelines, yeah, have gastroenterology, we always have guidelines to this disease, to that disease, to this disease, how to treat them, how to approach them, what, how the management is. Yeah, uh, we read these guidelines, sometimes we, are, we realize that we have been doing the wrong thing. So we correct ourselves, Sheshram. And that's what we should do here. Yeah, right. Yoga surgeons, they don't want to learn. They don't want to follow guidelines. They just want to proceed as they are. And let me just mention one example, which is biopsy followed by radiotherapy. So Bahim Sahih, and if I'm wrong, most of the time, people would go for a glioma for a biopsy and then send for radiotherapy. Guidelines of the Oncology Committee of the World Federation for the last 20 years. If you cannot excise more than 85% of the tumor, don't bother sending them to radiotherapy. Radiotherapy and chemotherapy will be useless. If you remove more than 85, then refer for radio and chemotherapy because it will be useful. So the guideline is there. They don't want to follow it. They just want to have an excuse that we don't have facility but you have the facility to make a biopsy, stereotactic biopsy, with computers. Yet they can't have the experience of removing the tumor. Yeah, I totally agree. The most important, the most important in the gloma is maximum Thank you. This is well worth more than everybody knows. I have a question for Dr. Habib. Yes, yes. Sure. Uh, guidelines, I think that every center in the world, according to his experience, it has guidelines different. يعني هاي النقطة بحب أوضحها للدكتور مؤمن يعني كلمة guidelines ما فيش guidelines مطلقة لكل العالم ولكل الناس لازم ما في difference according to the difference of experience 80% 85% 85% دكتور مؤمن والموضوع مجوز يتطرق إلى اختصاصات أخرى هلا أفرض إنه الدكتور بالليل ما لقي الجدري وحط شنط and he documented انه the shunt was not available مثلا ما فيش جدرين and I was forced to put the shunt and I document that. Is that how valid يعني, is that in your estimation? Is it a document? Is للأسف مستودعات مختلفة زي الأصلاء والشعر الغزير على الجسم. آه الآن لو الدكتور طلب وقالوا له ما في وتبين فيه في المستودعات واحد مات وصار في قضية الوزير بروح السجن. وبالتالي لا هذا أنا بحكي أنا بحكي شيء أنا بحكي شيء إنه تاخذوا تاخذوا الكلام سيريوس هلا النزاهة إذا مكافحة الفساد عم نجيب أي واحد في أي وقت الآن المشكلة الأطباء ما بكتبوش ما بكتبوش مع الناس هلا لو واحد يطلب يطلب أي شيء ما بيطلب فإنه يطلب يفتح الحجر هذا طبعا ريديكولس هذا الاقتراح آه ما فيش عنا شيء مش موجود لما يجي طبيب ما يرضاش يجي برضه يدان آه الان لما احنا نمشي على التراك يعني انا نفسي آه شيء قانوني لما حكينا على على الموضوع الموضوع المسؤوليه الطبيه وليس المساعده الطبيه هو السعي نحو الجوده وليس السعي نحو نحبس الاطباء 
نهاية وبالتالي لما احنا نيجي نقول انه في عندنا الان قانون مسؤوليه طبيه معناها انت بدي احاسبك تكتب ولا ما بتكتب اذا ما بتكتب معناها نظرت نظرت وبالتالي اعتقد اعتقد الناس كلها بحاجه تغير المفاهيم الثقافه السلوك وانا ما بدي ادخل بحوار شخصي المسؤول اللي هو نفسه المدان لانه احنا الحمد لله في بلدنا دائما المسؤول يعني الراس هو اللي بيكون الفساد منه اوكي آه. يوم ما حضرتك تطلب ملف دو يو ثينك انه يوصل بوصل والله ما بيوصل معلش دكتور بوصل انا انا مسؤول هلا بحكي لك مش ما في شيء بتخبر انه يجيني الملف فاضي فاضي الملف اذا كان فاضي آه معناها انا بقول الملف فاضي والمسؤوليه بحطها على اللي ما عباش الملف او على الاداره اللي منعت انا اليوم من الايام لما واحد توفى بالمستشفى الامير حمزه حطينا المسؤوليه على الوزير وانا كنت في الوزاره اه ما صار صار مش كثير لا يا جماعه انتم اذا بدنا نمزح نمزح احنا انا بحكي لك انا بحكي لك صار على الوزير ومدير المستشفى حط السجن نتمنى انه ما ما نتمنى انت اللي بتح... اللي بتقود على يعني على لما الاطباء بدهم مش هلا بقولوا لهم تعالوا احضروا محاضرات مركزيه الاطباء بدهم يعملوا اعتصام المسؤولين عنهم لا لا دكتور هلا في جديد وزير طلب ناس تحضر محاضرات مركزيه في مواضيع معينه الاطباء بدهم يضربوا ممنوع بدناش بدهم يوم السبت انا اللي بدي احكي خلينا الان نركز على انه بدنا نطور بلدنا مش نجلد حالنا نجلد حالنا هذا موضوع سهل جدا لكن نطور بلدنا هذا بدي اسكت دكتور محمود خطيب اي ونت تو You don't have a shunt, you have a feeding tube. Yes. If you don't have a shunt, shunt mukawan nish. You can check a look at it or connection. You can use it to look at it. So there is always something to do. But if you don't want to do, make an excuse, then you will stay as you are. You will never give up. Thank you very much.